The joke goes that Iraqis can't find Sweden on a map, but they all know how to get to Sodatelia. And if you spend time with the thousands of Iraqi Christians here, you can believe it. In the church hall, it's stories of death threats and persecution, of $15,000 to a people trafficker, and of a life in Sweden that may be safer, but not better than home. For example, you work in, in the restaurant, um, washing, washing dishes, cleaning, uh, uh, anything, especially if you don't know how to speak the language. So what, what do you expect? You, you can't communicate with people. So you are not qualified enough to work in any place. Sodatelia, or Mesopotelia as it's become known, is now so full of Iraqi Christians that it's at breaking point. People living 15 to an apartment, asylum cases taking months to process, refugee children unable to go to school. Local officials say they can barely offer a minimum standard quality of life. We think we have no more to give because it's so much people coming and the schools are full, the uh, introduction program is full. Uh, to come to a town when, when um, there are thousand people uh, in one year uh, in Södertälje or to come to another town there when 50 people comes, it's a, a big difference. We found this group of Iraqi men and women taking their first course in how to get a job, yet many had been in Sweden getting on for a year. No Swedish language, no residency permits, enormous pressure on them and on the system. If more people come, there will be no apartments, no jobs for people here. If they keep coming, the government will have to find another way to address the problem. Poor Sweden. It's taken 50% of all Iraqi refugees to the European Union and 5% of the world's total, even though it had absolutely nothing to do with the war. The government can barely hide its frustration at carrying such a burden and not being able to deliver. If you compare the figures for Sweden and the United States, it is true that if the US should accept just as high number, when you compare the population in the country, they should, by the, the date of today, have accepted approximately, I think, 500,000 Iraqis compared to Sweden. So yes, of course, I would like to see more countries step up their, their <laughs> efforts in this matter. The Iraqis point their satellite dishes east, terrified still of speaking, in case it means death threats from afar, still hoping their relatives can join them in their overcrowded new lives. The point is there's no winners in this story, not the Swedish government who are desperate to get Iraqi people out of Södertälje, not the local council here who are desperate to get Iraqi people out of these conditions, and not the Iraqi people themselves who may be safe here, but apparently are by no means happy. As amazing as it sounds, and despite all the benevolence from the Swedish authorities, it's still true that this is in danger of turning into an Iraqi ghetto. <laughs> Ultimately, this is a story about the power of fear which drove them from Iraq and which keeps them in Södertälje with the comfort of the church and their friends, even though there are no prospects here. It may be safe, but it's not home, not by a long way. Lawrence Lee Al Jazeera, Södertälje in Sweden.